Yes, it's raining again. Jeez, this is like two weeks where every day we're having rain. But it's a good time to sort of talk about bugs and fungus because this is the time of year. It's hot, it's humid, it's getting up to the 90s. Uh, the humidity is, you know, 80 to 100 percent. This is the time that you really want to be careful and start watching for your fungus in your lawn. You also want to watch for, this is the time of year you'll start to get a lot of insects in your lawn. So just be careful. So today I'll do two things. I'm going to show you some insect damage that I found out front. I don't know what it is, but I haven't treated it in a while, so I'm going to treat for it. Also, I'll walk you over to Barb's. I'll show you some fungus uh, issues that she had last year that are starting to appear again at this time of the year. Uh, we treat for that. And then after that, I'll walk you over to the garden and show you something amazing over at the garden. So we'll do those three, three things. Again, I'm just walking around doing stuff today and I grab the camera while I'm doing it. I'm not trying to shoot a video. I'm actually shooting video while I do this stuff. The green's doing well. Everything's doing well. Again, the lawn, PGF Complete and Humichar. I'll put links to the PGF Complete, the Humichar for the lawn. You need to be getting those out now. And anything I'm talking about today, I'll put a link down below. If you haven't gotten the Bermuda Lawn Guide, get the Bermuda Lawn Guide and click subscribe. We've got so many videos coming out. I got them stacked up. I don't know how I'm going to get them all done. So let's go. Hey guys, so I was out earlier before the sun came up and we're battling thunderstorms. And just so you know, hit subscribe because Jesse's supposed to be out here working in the garden and we got thunderstorms rolling in all day. So I've got about seven videos we got to shoot that I'm trying to get done and I can't. But I'm uh, hoping you can see all these sort of footprints all through my yard. And I can tell down here that this is a deer and there's a deer over there. But then I come over here and I'm seeing, I see a piece of grass pulled up. And that's an immediate sign to me that there's some kind of beetle or bug that the crows are in here eating. I don't think it's grubs because I've treated for grubs, but you never know. So I had a bunch of footprints from the deer coming through but then I came over here and I saw this this was one of my first warning signs this right here where I had a tuft of grass pulled up then I came over here and looked and I saw this which looks like some kind of hole it's about an inch deep <clears throat> and I could see some of that activity like right here see that there's about an inch deep hole right in there and because I don't see any like exit marks normally I might say it's an armadillo in here but I think this is crows and I can see that all in here see like right in here there's a little hole right down there so there's something in here that they're attacking and so what I'm gonna do uh, I have not put down the double kill product in the description below I'll link to everything I'm talking about so just there's one link click it it'll take you to our page and I'll link to this product with all this damp weather there's a good chance you might need fungicide and some insecticide <laughs> so we're gonna put down I'm gonna put down the double kill today on the front because I got a thunderstorm coming through perfect time to put it down same thing with your uh, fungicide but when I start to see those little holes in my lawn I know what it is. Now I'm going to walk you over real quick and I'm going to show you Barb's little fungus issue. So let me walk over there and show you it. <clears throat> See this right in here? I mean it's um, it almost has the look of a dollar spot but it's not. I don't think that's dollar spot. I don't know what kind of fungus it is so I'm going to treat this with the granular fungicide and then I may even come back with a secondary different chemical and treat it as well too because I need to jump on this. Last year this whole area got infected with fungus. I'm starting to see it. So now is now, the time to hit it. Remember, I don't know where you are, but in our area we've had really warm temps and we've had lots of misting rains and lots of gray days. That is the fungus issue. So today, it's not a bad time. We're about to hit June 1st. Oh crap, June 1st. Like, that's my wife's birthday. <laughs> Maybe I'll cut the grass for her. Um, <clears throat> it's about to hit June 1st. And we've had lots of rain move in. Lots of rain patterns. Lots of damp weather. Lots of humidity. 
not a bad time if you haven't put down a fungicide, a preventative. What I'm going to show you today, or what I'll link to in the description below, is a, is a granular uh, preventative and treatment, and then the double kill for insects. Not a bad idea if you haven't done that yet, too. Okay, so tip number one. Why do I have my spreader sitting like this? Um, make sure your spreader is dry. I use a paper towel and I clean it out and then I let the sun hit it and heat it up. All of these um, DG particles will react with water. So what you wanna do is you wanna make sure that your spreader is completely dry before you put them in. Next, let's talk about the spreader settings. All right. So today I am using the Anderson's Yard Star. This is the biggest pain in the butt to assemble, but it's probably my favorite spreader. Now I've got spreaders that are $600 huge professional spreaders and I like this one and I consistently pull this one because it's lightweight. It's just over 200 bucks and it's a really good spreader. Anyways, I did a review on it. So there we are closed. There we are, fully open with the three holes. And I'm going to come down to about there. And if you can maybe get a perspective on that hole size. So whenever you use these tiny particles, both on the fungicide and on the duos and the double kill here, always start off with a small hole pattern. Very small. Run it, see how it's going out, put it out on a known area, and then if it's not enough, then you can go back and double it. And then you can adjust your hole pattern. You'll get a feel for your own for your own spreader. Everyone always asks for numbers. And I'm telling you, numbers don't work on these things because every person's spreader is different based on the way that you assemble it. So really the numbers don't work. You just really have to focus on the hole size. Like everyone always asks for numbers and I tell them it varies. And so what I do is I give them like eighth of an inch, quarter of an inch, I give them those measurements. So I'm starting off small. Make sure, oh, I got First thing I gotta do is I gotta lock in my size. And then make sure it's closed. Okay, so here's this double kill process. This is what we look like tiny little particles. Now, these particles will disperse as soon as they're wet. And I use this for army worms, I use this for grubs, I use this for ticks, I use this for ants. Um, one of the reasons why I wear a glove is because if I want to come in and throw some into some bedding areas, like if I have earwigs under mulch or something like that, I'm going to throw this product in there. This is one of the only products that you can evenly disperse as a granule. As soon as you wet it, it disperses instantly. It'll kill above and below ground. So it'll kill above ground insects and it will kill below ground. It'll kill grubs. If you're going to kill grubs, want to kill grubs, you've got to put it out at the heavy rate. That's one thing I've learned. You have to apply it at the heavy rate for grubs. Water it in, water it in, because the grubs, two to three inches deep, and you got to get it down to the grubs. The grubs really aren't going to come up to the surface. Army worms, it's different. Army worms, later in the fall, uh, I'll put a light coat of this out, wet it right away, and then come back and actually spray a little permethrin on top of it, and boom, they're devastated. Instantly killed. So as soon as you detect army worms, hit them with it. But uh, the fungicide is basically the same product as this. It's very small DG particle. You can put it out. Just wet it a little bit and you're done. Are they pet safe? Read the labels. Each one of these products will tell you what to do if you have pets. But generally speaking, they'll say, after you wet the product and get it into the ground and it dries for an hour or two, yes, it's pet safe. I'll tell you, I've used these products for two or three years with my little dogs and I've had no issues whatsoever, none. The only issue I've had, honestly, is with malorganite and my Jack Russell, I did a treatment um, one time out here, fairly heavy for a phosphorus correction. And she went around eating the malorganite and I thought she had blood in her stool because her stool turned solid black. Uh, and I should have known it was malorganite. But anyway, so the way, so the way that I'm gonna put this out is, um, I'm gonna go over the entire yard one time, 
where I see problems, where I have those crow peckings. I'm gonna go over that twice, and then I'll probably take some of this and throw it into my flower beds. The nice thing is I don't have to worry about it bothering bees because it's a granular and it'll go right to the ground and disperse into the ground. But we have a lot of problems with like earwigs and mulch and it'll help with that. So what I did there was I went over the entire lawn once on the trouble area where I knew I had problems. I went over that twice and then I stopped at my gardens and flower beds and threw it in. Now here's a tip and the tip that I have for you today is um, I like to put this out while there's dew on the grass. I can see my wheel patterns and the DG particles will get wet right away. And so if I want, I can actually come out here with a hose and just spray it real quick. The particles are getting wet right now and they'll disperse even more with the hose. That's one of the tricks I've learned with DG particles. Okay, so I'm about to run down to the shed and get my spreader, but before I do, I, I gotta stop and show you this. If you have any kind of garden, whether it's flower or whether it's vegetable, especially you guys up north that haven't planted yet or just starting to plant, use this super compost. This is just insane. So I went and checked the dates. Uh, March 25th, these were planted, these tomato plants, and they were about eight inches tall. And I want you to look at, I want you to look at all the fruit on these things. I mean, look deep in there. It was crazy. Absolutely insane. Please don't bite the bee. Squash plants are massive. Here, as an example, this is just today. So, eight weeks, about seven weeks on my squash, which are huge. These are from seeds. These are cherry tomatoes from seeds, probably about six weeks old over here <clears throat> zucchini over here from seed squash yellow squash over here from seed peas over here from seed these are about four or five weeks old i've already got peas growing which as i promised you never make it inside yes i eat them like candy out here the peas never make it inside mm. Oh, so good. Green peppers. Every single one of these plants is loaded with green peppers. Um, I've already harvested a bunch of those. I harvested my first cucumber. This is from seed. I harvested my first cucumber yesterday. These are a little behind. These are only about four weeks old. We are not using fertilizer per se. So what we're doing is we're mixing organic matter into this compost. We're adding super juice and the humichar, humichar into it. And it's just, this, this stuff is just blowing. I've never had a garden like this. It is crazy. So anyways, sun's coming out and then more clouds are coming. Who knows what's going on. The next five days are gonna be beautiful. So we're gonna be doing a lot of work around here. Uh, we got a lot going on. So like I said, Jesse's coming out tomorrow. I'm gonna show you guys uh, we're actually going to make up some more of this compost and I'm going to have her put it. And the other thing we're going to do in this garden is now that we've got these stru the structure of the larger plants figured out, I'm going to come back in here maybe with some carrots and use some of this extra real estate in here. Our dog goes pee. Um, to, to use some other plants in here. The other thing I'm going to do, let me show you something else really cool. Hold on. So what I do with this area is a lot of times... Uh, in the fall and winter, I'll pull the garden out and I'll just dump all the plants back here and just sort of let them compost out. There's a lot of gra uh, grass clippings and stuff back here. All right, so we're just throwing some grass clippings and we'll sort of make this, turn this back into kind of a mulch pile. I want you to look back here <laughs> from last year. Look at these tomato plants here. 
Isn't that crazy? So I think what I might do is I'm going to see if maybe I can rescue some of those and bring them inside to a couple areas I got. This is uh, the backwoods area over here. And, uh, I mean, these are not going to do it. They're going to get destroyed. So let me see if I can sort of save these and bring them back in. I might do that today, actually. Anyways, hit subscribe and I'll throw that on the next video. All the products I'm talking to are linked down below. This is the time of year. Fungicide. Watch for your fungus. Watch for any bugs or pests. And uh, talk to you later. Talk.